Was it popping up? <laughs> was well, no. <laughs> you hear Mark? You didn't lock it. <laughs> <laughs> and it cuts right into the city. <laughs> Great. <laughs> That's fucking funny. <laughs> Those videos came out dope. Welcome to season two of the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny the Trailer King Roadblock, and you all know my co-host, Justin. I have 10,000 Instagram followers, Bird, and Uncle Don't Check My Amazon Order History (laughs) Ken. This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your one-stop shop for all things Harley and Harley-related. Nutsack, the last EDC bag you will ever want or need, and Brush Hero, the ultimate detail brush. Today, we are discussing our adventures in Arkansas. I feel like we need some banjo music in the background. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh, what is up, gentlemen? Oh, man, still just trying to recover from this trip no, yeah, like we got we got back on monday i'm glad i'm not the fucking only one that feels that way I'm, i mean not physically just like everything that fucking happened i mean oh, my yeah. wrist still fucking kills but like everything that just i mean i edited 344 gigabytes in footage in two days damn i just fucking burnt i was having such a good time doing it like the trip videos are probably my favorite because it's mm-hmm. a very good mixture of like riding and off bike activities mm-hmm. and things like that. And especially this trip, we had a lot of off bike stuff and that's why I really focused on and they came out really, and really everyone's awesome. going to fucking hate you for it. Oh, for sure. Get back on that bike. Guaranteed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One episode. I don't even think we would touch the bikes. Nice. Day, day four when we went downtown. Oh yeah, man. It came out to be an, I loved it, oh. but, and it actually, when I ran it through my little, I have a little tool that like helps me with like my tags and search queries and everything. Mm -hmm. I had a score of a hundred. (laughs) So like it's telling me like it's pretty much going to be guaranteed to rank in the top five. If anyone searches Eureka Springs. Oh, so I was like, fuck yes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Very nice. Very nice. So before we go into the Arkansas trip, let's talk about the June 22nd event coming up. Very soon. Coming up very soon. Yeah. I think it's uh, two weeks after this episode comes out, this uh, two Saturdays. It's on yeah. my calendar now. Yep. Good so, job, buddy. <laughs> the one, two, three event where we are celebrating Between Two Wheels one year anniversary, the second annual Honor Flight fundraiser for Alamo City Hog, and the third anniversary for the Bike and Bird YouTube channel. This will be taking place on Saturday, June 22nd at Cowboys Alamo City Harley Davidson here in sunny San Antonio. If you're in the area or if you just want an awesome road trip, Come out, celebrate with us, hang out, and uh, donate to a good cause. I'll be signing autographs. I just realized it took me three years to get 10,000 Instagram followers. (laughs) 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 That hurts. (laughs) Quality, not quantity. Sure. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so. The Arkansas trip. The Arkansas adventure. I'm so excited for this episode. I'm, like, pumped up. Okay, so. Yeah. I, I'm, I've started leaving the uh, edits that Justin and Ken have been doing in the show notes. <laughs> no, you edited this one. Well, yeah, because you had Trader yep. Queen. Exactly. Because <laughs> um, so, he gets to give us nicknames every episode, so I feel like it's only fair that we get to give him nicknames as well. Do you know how difficult it is sometimes to come up with good nicknames? I have to go to my ginger joke catalog <laughs> and see which ones I haven't used yet and which ones kind of work. That must be fucking worn out. Oh, God. <laughs> he has but, to wear uh, white gloves to turn the pages. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I did trailer. And if you guys saw our Instagram post, uh, it has my bike and Tracy's bike on, on the Kendon dual rail folding trailer i i I will say it again the reason i hate on it so much is 110 percent out of jealousy (laughs) oh absolutely (laughs) because that trailer's fucking dope yeah i I love it it's dope when you lock it on the ball if it's not locked it's a little dangerous yeah it's also dope when you don't smash the taillight yeah as well yeah so yeah that if y'all didn't hear about this (laughs) (laughs) one year to the day to the day that Justin <laughs> rear-ended my streak light out of jealousy he then <laughs> rear-ends my <laughs> fucking trailer brand new the brand. very first bike to ever go on it <laughs> I like I think 
three hours prior, I had just gotten the tags put <laughs> on the trailer. Yep. It yep. wasn't even legal for 24 hours. <laughs> he goes and crashes the fucking fender. Now, he does. He has a thing with my ass ends. Yep. He does. That's just what it is. Mm -hmm. Ramming it up there. Ramming it in the And I'm the collecting ass. pieces. <laughs> <laughs> I still need to get a piece of that saddlebag because I'm going to get a piece of the saddlebag. I have your taillight that I smashed out, and yeah. I also kept... Hosso's, uh, Hosso's wind windscreen flicker. after Ken pulled it I off. I ripped that fucker clean <laughs> off. I barely touched that son of a bitch. So yeah, so back to the whole comfort thing. That trailer paid for itself yeah. in that trip. Tracing, I mean, yes, it sucks not being able to ride with you guys, but what doesn't suck... Obviously it doesn't suck too bad or you would have rode out with yeah. us. Well, <laughs> what doesn't suck is the fact that that next day and when we got yeah. to Arkansas... 100% fresh, ready to ride. Yeah. And when I got home, went to bed, woke up the next day, not a single acre pain. Yeah. So people want to talk shit about trailering, fuck y'all. It is <laughs> comfortable. <laughs> I was comfortable. I was a lot more comfortable than the last time I did a road trip, even on the borrowed Ultra. On the, the dyno, oh my God. <laughs> I mean, you rode with me to, to Paris, Jesus Christ. By mile 300, I was practically crying i was hurting so bad this i didn't really start feeling any pain until about the 500 mile mark like was that right when we got into arkansas pretty much thereabouts. yeah that that last stop we made i was just about feeling it yeah and then in between that last stop and our destination is I mean, when i 90 percent of our trip was still in texas you know yeah getting yeah out, getting out of texas yeah so we'll start off talking about the prep, and I think we kind of made a mistake here because <laughs> this is really the only, the second big trip that we've taken as a group. Now, the reason, well, I guess you can count third if you want to count the the bachelor party, but that wasn't motorcycle related. Yeah. Right. But the reason I say this is because it, it's not because of us, because we're all basically on the same page. It's more so getting all of our females to be on the same page because our first trip was Trilingua. Mm -hmm. And that was a no nonsense trip because if you don't go prepared, you could possibly, yeah, you could go hungry. I mean, <laughs> not have power, water. You, you could really be fucked up. But this one, I mean, we're only, what, 10 minutes from town? Yeah. We could go and get anything we, we needed or wanted. So yeah. trying to get the girls on the page of, yo, we don't need to stack the, the car full of of supplies. <laughs> yeah. Like, I like I didn't need to bring the, the burn-ins. I just wanted to. Yeah. And it, I figured, they were fucking great. God, oh, they were so good. Glad you enjoyed it. I'm making them again this, this uh, Monday. Fuck, as a texture eater, I was in hell. Because <laughs> they would go from like the fatty to like the the tender to the chewy. Oh god. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah. That's the weirdest boner right now. I mean, now. getting them like, I don't know how many times I had to tell my wife, no, we can get that when we get there. Yeah. She's like, well, I need to bring you know six cases of soda. No, we can get that when we get there. Yeah. yeah. So there's some either miscommunication somewhere in the women's section because no, it's just them being women. Well. <laughs> It happened somewhere, but Tracy was under the impression that we were going to be going out to eat most of the time we were there. So well, we, we only didn't go out once. Sunday. Was so it? we'll like breakfast and all that stuff. We didn't know that you guys were going to the store when you got there. So we didn't, we didn't end up doing breakfast until we were on the road. So for us, we didn't pack shit. Yeah. I mean, we brought some monsters and some teas for her. But that sounds like a good it. breakfast to me. I don't know what you're bitching about. I mean, I had, I had, you know, protein shakes. Could yeah. have had one. I yeah. had so many fucking donut holes. <laughs> <laughs> I was, dude, I could barely fucking button right. my work pants this week. So, God damn. So both me and my wife, we both gained 10 pounds. God damn. <laughs> dude, I ate so bad. I ate so much and so bad on this trip. So here's what's fucked up. Right before we left, I had to go to the doctor. And I weighed in at 284 pounds. This morning, I had to go to another doctor, and I weighed in at 277 pounds. I'm going to fucking stab you. So, no, I lost it, and you scales. found it. Two I different did. scales. I'm calling bullshit. Yeah. No, you didn't, you didn't eat that bad. I mean, compared to 
us. I mean, I literally was eating the entire time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was too. We, every place we went, yeah, I'm gonna have some of that. I'm gonna have some of that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll probably get to that a little bit later in the uh, the episode. But the ride there, so we left San Antonio around five thirty in the morning. Yeah, it was still dark out. Uh, we took 35 up to a toll road to bypass Austin because even though it was like 15 miles longer, it ended up being almost 20 minutes quicker. Thank God we did that because we didn't hit any traffic aside from that one accident where the, oh, yeah. the guy had laid his 300 over. Wait, y'all took the toll road? Yeah, yes. we took 130. Huh. And it was great. We hauled fucking ass. Man, it was <laughs> awesome. So we did hit traffic. So we didn't, obviously. Um, but we were only about 10 minutes behind y'all. Yeah, but 10 minutes in a truck yeah, and 10 minutes yeah, true. <laughs> riding the clutch in a bike. Yeah. Different worlds. Totally different world. But that, that tollway cost you $25. Yeah. If they can see my license plate. True. Good fucking luck getting under that tour pack. I was riding right next to you. Let's see who they sent it to. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so y'all took the bypass. Correct. And then we pretty much just hit 35 up to 75. So is it the bypass is where y'all noticed that Brad's bike was broke dick oh no no it, it wasn't, wasn't until, until a little the, bit after that the oh, okay. second bucky stop? no it was temple it was the first bucky first stop bucky but he stop. said he noticed it i think it was right when we were getting off the bypass okay. on back onto 35 i think is when he noticed it so to help our audience understand he has a pre rushmore uh electric line limited 103 yeah and ultra limited ultra limited and the switch housings on these are screw in switch housings where the screws can actually fall out where on the Rushmore model. So the 2014 and newer, the bolts that hold in the housings cannot come out. They are stuck there. So what I understood now, you guys fill in the blanks here, but his control module fell off or the, the cover started falling. Off. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. you noticed it started coming apart. Yeah. Okay. So the clamshell, just basically the front where the buttons are, mm-hmm. kind of folded out. <laughs> <laughs> and for him, that's probably scary as hell. Oh, yeah, for sure. But uh, what had ended up happening is one of the screws fell out and the other one just never was there or neither one of them was ever there. No fucking clue. No when clue. we saw it, there was no screws. There was two <laughs> screws holding it in. Neither of them were there. <laughs> and it didn't fall apart completely. No. Yeah. So well, that, that's, that that's could have been a blessing. whole lot worse. Oh, yeah. But uh, basically so, zip tied it. But by the time we realized it, it was only like eight thirty in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a dealer like seven miles from that first stop, but oh, they yeah. weren't open until I think ten or eleven. So we had well, to keep on. We drove by. Going. Uh, it's true. We drove by well, and they, they looked open. All their fucking bikes were out. Yeah. yeah. But I was like, well, too late. <laughs> it was already zip tied. So yeah, I mean, yeah. there's a sign on it. That was good. The only it thing, good. only thing that would have done more would be some duct tape. Yeah. Yeah. Or bailing wire. So we continued on from Temple, Texas. We went up to Dallas yeah. and the clusterfuck that is Dallas. Jesus. How are the roads so right. bad? So bad and so difficult. Like I have a great sense of direction. I uh, I take a wrong exit every fucking time I go to Dallas. Well, <laughs> and you know what doesn't help? What that you have to take seven exits in a mile and a half? No. <laughs> what doesn't help is the fact that the moon Oh, Does it? Geez. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't in Dallas. <laughs> so we make it through Dallas into uh, Allen, Texas. So it's about 35, 40 miles north of Dallas. And that's where we were meeting up with one of our fans uh, at Freddy for Life on Instagram. If y'all want to go check him out. Oh, hi, Mark. Hi, hi Mark. Mark. But uh, so, yeah, we, we ended up meeting up with him at the Dallas Harley Davidson of Allen, Texas. Now, let me clear it up. We weren't fucking stopping there because no. we were doing a dealership tour or anything like that. We needed parts for Brad's bike. Yeah. So we stopped there. <laughs> now yeah. that added an hour and 15 minutes Jesus. to the Doesn't trip. Feel, didn't feel like yeah, it. Yeah, I definitely did not feel like it. But uh, so that's the Harley shop that Tracy and I were kicked out of their hog chapter. Oh, nice. Fun fact. Oh. <laughs> that was the first time since being kicked out that I ever stepped foot into that dealership yeah did you feel like you were behind enemy lines i'm going to give you the stank eye no none of the people there i recognized yeah not yeah. one of them that doesn't surprise me no. so in the dealer principles that, that i had the issue with he's no longer there hmm. so so but, don't uh, burn the place down is what you're yeah saying. don't don't burn it down <laughs> Ken. Got it, got it. 
But uh, so they were super cool, though. They helped Brad out. They got him his screws, right? Yeah, they actually yeah. had him. I was yeah. impressed. They did not give him the uh, screwdriver, though. Thankfully, I had the correct They wouldn't bits. let him use a screwdriver. <laughs> what a fucking dick. Fuck you. Yeah. But you noticed all their bike, uh, a majority of their bikes were heavily upgraded. <laughs> Upgraded. upgraded yeah well God, they had some that accessories fat bob was fucking hideous they had some accessories and they they sent a bunch of their bikes out for paint and then they Jesus jacked the price Christ. way up on them yeah but they were all on sale for like four thousand over msrp yeah they wanted 23 grand for that fat bob yeah. that had all a bunch of fucking the copper accessories and then a stupid ass fucking graffiti paint job on the tank it's one of the ugliest fat bobs i've ever seen wow i didn't even see granted it. The Sport Glide with the fat tire conversion and the FXRT fairing was dope. I fucking took my hat off to them for that one. I didn't even look at the bikes. I was searching for a hat because yeah. I thought I'd left my hat at home. <laughs> Did you end up not leaving it at home? You just bought a hat. I just bought a hat. God yep. damn. So I have, <laughs> have another one. Anyways, left that dealership, jumped over to the other Bucky's, which was only like 10 miles up the road. Yeah. I uh, got a bite to eat and then blasted up onto or into Atoka, Oklahoma. Yep. Bless you. Take a toka. <laughs> <laughs> I actually made that joke in the vlog. I was like, a toka. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and then thankfully, my dad saved our ass because I had done the route oh, yeah. just to the next stop. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it from the, because we had one more stop before our final destination. And I just did it. And I was like, okay, because during the time of this trip, flooding in Oklahoma was really bad. Like some of the worst they've seen in a long Decades. time. Decades. So I just did it to the next stop. And I was like, all right, we're good. Google's saying there's no roads closed. Like, we're good to go. Well, basically what Google was doing in our route that I had planned out was basically putting us right in the middle of a long section of blocked off interstate. <laughs> so if we would have gone there, we would have had to backtrack or uptrack, yeah. go north, probably another 45 minutes to Fuck. an hour to suck. get around that. So thankfully... He caught that. I mean, we were just we about were about to, take to leave. Off. Yeah, just we were about to take leaving. Off. Yeah, I had my helmet on, ready to go, and he caught it. So, shout out, Dad, for not being a millennial fuck like me and checking the road closures. But uh, <laughs> we had to reroute to Fort Smith, Arkansas, which yep. was south of our route. Yeah, um, but we did see some pretty substantial flooding. Yeah, there was oh. there was a part where we were going through the highway, and you look to your left, you look to your right. It's a lake. I yeah. mean, there's white caps. The yeah. only reason I knew it wasn't supposed to be a lake was because there was farming equipment in yeah, it. The fucking irrigation, the <laughs> farmer's irrigation, irrigation yeah. equipment out there. Yeah. <laughs> I was on comms like, I'm like, holy shit, you could take a boat in that field. Yeah. Like, yeah. It there was, was fucking bad. Like, like and one foot white caps on that yes. fucking field. <laughs> like, and the billboards yes. had yeah. water up to the bottom of it. You could swim <laughs> up to the billboard. He goes, I think that water is a bit high. I was like, you think so? And then we started getting further and further. I'm like, Oh, yeah, that's a billboard, and the Man. water is at the bottom of it. I would say it's probably up a little yeah. bit. <laughs> uh, and then the uh, the river of stank. Oh, oh the I, I'll call it good stank because yeah. it went from good to stank. Oh, but yeah. I just thought it was so funny. We had three <laughs> different groups of people <laughs> not oh communicating God. at all, all experienced the same exact thing and described it in the exact yeah. same way. <laughs> Fried corn. Fried corn. Yep. Shit. Manure. Like roadkill compost, yeah like compost <laughs> yeah. and then fucking just death <laughs> yeah uh so we made it into arkansas oh man and so i didn't know this at the time mm -hmm. but tracy you know tracy had been napping pretty much that entire trip no yeah it was great and <laughs> we get up and we're going up was it 49 off of i-40 we get on 49 heading north up towards rogers and uh bentonville Mm -hmm. And we go through this massive tunnel. Oh, oh yeah. That tunnel was dope. And Tracy's like, why are we driving into a mountain? I was like, well, no, babe, there's a tunnel up here. <laughs> what? Freaked her the fuck out. <laughs> Me and Justin are like, oh, it's a tunnel. tunnel. It's a it's tunnel. A tunnel. <laughs> rev bomb, rev bomb. Oh, God, it was so cool. And so at this point, you guys are up ahead. Your dad and I are just kind of sh changing places of who's leading who. And... We're going, Tracy is like white knuckling <laughs> the oh shit bar. What the hell? She doesn't, she doesn't like confined spaces where, you know, 400 million metric tons of rock can, <laughs> can cave you in. Um, I don't know, but. We I may, will say riding through that tunnel 
was one of the coolest writing it was, experiences. It was pretty fucking cool. Because the, what my dad pointed out is the reason that tunnel's so unique is because it's actually curved. Yeah. So when you enter the tunnel, you can't see the exit on the other side. Yep. So it was, oh man, it was so cool. <laughs> it was awesome. It was so fun. It was so great. And, but so yeah, we, we get, we get out of there. We get up to um, Rogers and then we start, and I'll tell you, even the highways up there are cool. Oh, God, gorgeous. They were great. Not a single piece of trash. No. They're like, just fucking clean. So pristine. smooth. Yeah. And pulling trailers. Oh, yeah. That was the nicest road we'd been on all day. Oh, yeah. I bet Oklahoma was a shit show. Oh, oh, shit. We're going yeah. through Dallas. <laughs> Tracy's like, what? Did we have, do we have a flat? I was like, no, baby. No. The concrete truck had hydro- hydraulics on it. And it was bouncing <laughs> as it was pouring the concrete. But, uh, but we were going out of rogers to beaver arkansas correct which is where the airbnb or vbr or whatever the fuck it's called uh vrbo uh that's where it was at beaver arkansas yeah so let's go into that so it was funny because before we got there the place i put in the gps just took us to the start of the road that that was on so we turn off the highway and we instantly immediately get into just a gorgeous twisty forest road yeah and i pop my visor open i'm like ken do you do you smell that do you smell that i hear him open his visor and oh my god i'm like that is a smell i have never smelt before fresh air it literally (laughs) smells like what laundry detergent tries to smell like fresh air yeah it's precise this is is spring meadows breeze yeah but (laughs) It's so far fucking off. The real thing smells so much better. And I was telling him, it's so crazy that, I mean, I'm like 26 and he's like 45 and we still it's are close. just, yeah, we're still experiencing yeah. new things that yeah. naturally occur. Yeah. Tracy said it smelled like honeysuckle. honeysuckle. Yeah. Well, that was part of it, but They're there just, was a part where it was just fresh air yeah. before you got to the honeysuckle. So it took us for like a 10, 15 minute detour and I was totally totally okay with it because yeah. <laughs> we ended at like this dam that had like a nice we never ended up going there yeah we didn't so we actually passed the airbnb yeah. because the gps no matter what gps you put it in i did test this theory it took us to this old abandoned vfw building <laughs> next to the new vfw building <laughs> right there uh, if you were going out to eureka springs so Tracy's sending messages to Faith and Alicia saying, hey, have you guys passed over the one lane bridge? So I saw, no. So <laughs> we, we had gotten routed to the dam by First. Justin's GPS. Yeah. Mm. And I'm like, fuck it. So I pull it up in Waze and it took us right there. Yeah. Waze so, for the win this time. There you go. I got it right the second time. So, like, when you were giving me directions, my directions were pointing us in the right direction as well. It's just when I entered it the first time, it didn't pick up the first of the address, the house number. So, it was just taking us to Highway 187. Yeah, 187. That's where it started. Murder Highway. Murder Highway. Yeah. All right. So, (laughs) we get to the Airbnb. We get to the Airbnb. And (laughs) this place was super cool. I mean, I want to stay there again. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would love to stay there. Def- only, only if you're renting out the whole place, though. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. No, no neighbors. Yeah. Fuck yeah. that. No. Uh, but we put how many of this? Ten. Ten of us, comfortably. Yeah. I mean, we could have had two more people staying there. Oh yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, spouses. Yeah. Well, whoever tags along with Brad. Yeah. And then Hasso's wife. We would all been comfortable. Oh yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. Didn't feel overcrowded. It's kind of like an old hotel. Type That's what of it was. Thing. That's what it was. Oh, was it was it? built in the eighteen yeah. hundreds. It was an old lodge. Lodge or brothel. Yeah. Well, either. Yeah. Either. But yeah, yeah so judging. it had like a commercial size kitchen. Yeah. Had a common area. Every room, bes- except for two, the uh, two rooms shared a bathroom. But other than that, every room had its own bathroom. Like yep. it was literally the perfect setup for a group vacation. Yeah. Like oh yeah. That. Yeah. And the the fee was reasonable oh yeah super reasonable yeah so way cheaper than a hotel would have been oh oh yeah 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 hotels in that area when i looked they're about 145 150 a night for non-name brand yeah and they were nothing fancy no no (laughs) yeah um but yeah to your point we were about 10 15 minutes away from eureka springs right on the lake yeah 
Table Rock Lake. Table Rock Lake. Next to the terrifying Beaver Bridge. (laughs) It was fucking haunted, I swear. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, yeah, we get everything unloaded, jump into the truck and into Alicia's car. And we go to the only place open. You forgot a very important part of that story. Yeah. Why we were going there in the first place. Okay. (laughs) So this lodge is above a antique shop slash bar slash pizza place. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That works. Yeah. So we go down there and everyone uh, orders their, their drinks, orders their pizza. About 15 minutes goes by. We spot a baby raccoon. Yeah. We go and we pet the baby raccoon. It was awesome. And then we come back and the waitress comes back out and she said, the bad news is I don't have enough food for everybody. <laughs> I was Not like, okay, so what's the crust had yeah. cured yeah. or something. Proofed. 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 I was like, okay, so what's the good news? She's like, I've got enough for three large pizzas. And we're like, well, that's not going to fucking work. Yeah. <laughs> the best line of the uh, the <laughs> evening. Soak <laughs> this in. <laughs> Drink this in, sweetheart. Drink this in, sweetheart. <laughs> think three large pizzas is going to work? <laughs> no. <laughs> so she was... I was fucking starving, dude. Oh, yeah. She was, and I know I wasn't the only one, yeah. She was quite um, Arkansas stereotype. But she had more of her teeth than what you'd expect. Yeah. I was totally hitting on her for Brad. A lot of oh, shitty yeah. tattoos. Oh, big, yeah. But she was nice. She had big titties. Eh. 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 Um, <laughs> but so I was totally just talking Brad up in Brad's face. And Trace like, oh, stop yeah. it, stop it. He could have got Brad, some free pizza. Brad was like, I have learned never to try and stop him. Because <laughs> it won't work. <laughs> that's no. probably a good That's a great. That's <laughs> a good a great. strategy. <laughs> Don't but, fight uh, it. Don't s- fight it. It's just going to get more aggressive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'll get worse. Um, but anyways, <laughs> back to your part of the story. Yeah. We're heading into town. We're heading into town. The only thing that looked open, and this was on Thursday night, so the nightlife really wasn't hitting Eureka Springs, Arkansas at this point. It was point. pretty late, too. Yeah. yeah. It was 930. Yeah. 930. Uh, McDonald's was the only place open, and I think we were there for, what, two hours, two and a half just hours? Just about, yeah. Um, to not get everything we ordered. Four out of five orders were incorrect. Yeah. Somehow, mine and Tracy's was correct. Yep. Don't know how it happened. Four <laughs> out of five orders was and, incorrect. And this was one of those new fancy McDonald's that have the kiosks where you go and place your orders. And that's where Trace and I had ordered. And our stuff came out correct. Well, actually, my order came out correct because Brad was hitting on my wife the entire weekend. <laughs> and he ended up buying her dinner which is fine save me some money maybe but he's whatever. trying to go the opposite way because brad usually goes for the young girls maybe he's going for the older crowd maybe he sees how it worked out for me and you yeah I'm trying to so, learn something is faith older than you no no okay no well maybe he's trying to learn from me and you <laughs> yeah. but uh but yeah so our orders came out fine i was waiting for you to do a mcdonald's pop in that place <laughs> god damn i was so <laughs> fucking pissed i've never <laughs> seen ken that mad no, and and oh, that wasn't even that bad, man. He was le- he it was legitimate for him to be mad. Yeah, fucking. I gave them plenty of time. You gave him forty five minutes at a McDonald's time before to, he to make popped what? off a to make two burgers, <laughs> yeah, two fries, and some nuggets. Okay, <laughs> so literally the shit that they serve all day. So the fries and nuggets, they're fried. It. My daughter, she used to work at McDonald's. Okay. I, I now know it takes exactly three minutes to make a batch of fries. <laughs> wow. From a drop to put in a box, three minutes. <laughs> and that's the longest thing it takes to cook there. Damn. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So <laughs> Ken was about to murder someone. Uh, the guy's excuse the manager's oh. excuse. <laughs> oh, this son of a bitch. Now, we did slam them pretty hard with 10 of us walking in there, and there was already another big group of, like, four. So <laughs> yep. so we overwhelmed them. But when you look at your screen, your screen pops up. When you're in the kitchen, your screen pops up, and you see burger, 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 nugget, 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 fry. You know what you do? Start. You drop three fucking baskets of fries, three fucking baskets of nuggets, and start throwing patties on that fucking grill. Yeah, it's not hard. Not hard at all. Anyways, so we go through we the McDonald's debacle. We get back to the uh, Airbnb, hang out, 
and then and then, then we start the rides the next morning that was great yeah <laughs> god i got lost multiple times and every single time i got lost because the harley gps is oh my god garbage it is the worst fucking gps to ever be invented and and it's garmin is it really yeah yeah i was gonna ask why don't they have some sort of like proprietary software like even put their fucking name on it and make a badass gps but like half the stops i was trying to find it wouldn't even fucking pull up Mm -mm. like what is this i put in to go to a harley shop and it, you know, it has the dealerships button. Yeah, I hit that. I was like, "Okay, Pig Trail Harley Davidson, awesome." Boop. Luckily, we ran into a gas station, and I put in five point nine two gallons of gas. <laughs> I'm like, "Holy! This is the most fuel I've ever had to put in this bike." So luckily, we hit that, and there's Mark, Tracy, and I, and we're riding around, and yeah, we got lost a bunch. But every single time I got lost, it was a fucking amazing ride. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, the scenery, the roads. So it's funny you bring that up. We missed the exit for the Dallas Harley on the way up there. Yeah. And I was using the Harley GPS. And Ken can confirm that it wasn't because I wasn't paying attention because I had just made a mention that we've only had two miles left. And I was sitting there watching, watching, watching. It never told me to exit. And then all of a sudden, it's like, take the next turnaround. I'm like, what the what the fuck yeah. like <laughs> yep. this is to a harley dealership you should know exactly where this is yeah some sums up but yeah so trace and i we ended up well, with mark yeah we ended up going up to rogers uh to picture a harley davidson but to clarify for the viewers we did split off and kind of do our own things yeah. across some of the days so yeah. this is what you were doing yeah so trace and i we were actually on our way up to springfield missouri to go get the intersection of tracy and jonathan Okay. Hey, she's been trying to do this for like nine years. So well, you should tell her you've been trying to do butt stuff for nine years. So it needs to, you know, yeah, one for yeah. one. There you go. So we we ended up doing that, having uh, lunch, and then we're like, okay, we have two and a half hours to go, <laughs> an hour and fifteen minutes up the road. We can get our picture, be there, perfect. And y'all were still late. Yep. <laughs> we were like an hour late. Out yeah. fucking around. No. <laughs> we didn't even get our picture before. Yeah. We we ended up going straight to the dealership because we get on the highway, which then turns into an actual road, and there is some horrible accident. And I'm looking at it in the time, and I even flipped over into like Apple Maps and then Waze, and it just, the time started creeping. It's like three and a half hours what whoa <laughs> so i i rerouted and apple maps actually hooked me up with this one wow about fucking time and well the, didn't they start using google software pretty sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we ended up on this amazing ride and we were hauling ass and it was just awesome roads mm-hmm. I, I think that area is the most curvy area i've ever been to wow and about a about 70 miles of turns and twists and just awesome just gorgeous but we finally got up to the dealership finally finally i know (laughs) uh but we met up with you guys and the ornery one correct and the ornery squall 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 uh for the meet and greet so that was kind of cool some folks showed up cool little dealership it wasn't one of the major corporate dealerships this is definitely a mom and pop style dealership which i really (laughs) liked so Uh, we had a a very different experience getting to the dealership than you did um better or worse or indifferent eh, indifferent so our plan was to get to um springfield have lunch head over to dealership well of course with us being with three women it we left like 30 45 minutes later than yep. what we needed to yeah um and then we had our one and only debacle with the cardo pack talks which was 110 percent user error so we got everybody it was me him and my wife getting connected <laughs> it showed connected everything was good and everything was looking good on the app we could hear her she could not hear us i'm like how is that even fucking possible i was like she might have i was like either 
it's it's turned all the way down or she disconnected her speakers. Like that's oh the God. only two options I can think of. So we go probably about 45 minutes to a gas station. Uh, we pull over, some people need gas, so we're filling up. And I ask her, I'm like, can you hear me? And she's like, no. And I'm like, turn it up. And she, she gets a fucking ad too. She's like, it's all the way up. And I see her scrolling. So it's not like a dial like the Senate is. It's, it's, it's like a like barrel. A barrel. Yeah, like yeah. you roll the barrel. And I see her going like that. And I'm like, that's down. <laughs> and you see her kind of have that, oh, fuck. So she starts turning it up. I'm like, can you hear me now? She goes, oh. I was oh, like, yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> so again, not a, not a nope. it's a hundred percent user error. Yeah. Guaranteed. Anyways. So we get to the restaurant. It was uh, called the roost. It was suggested by the honorary one. Uh, it was basically like a little barn grill. Food was actually pretty decent. Eh. I know you had the issue with your food coming out mediocre, but, um, it was just lukewarm. Yeah. Uh, but we pretty much just had to inhale it cause we were so late. And we were getting on the bikes three minutes before we were supposed to be there. <laughs> I was like, well, I text, I was like, yo, we're going to be a little bit late. Um, and then we get there, and like you said, a few people hanging out, got to see some some faces we had met before yep. with uh, Rosie, and then a couple new faces meeting TJ and, and Stephanie. TJ was a funny motherfucker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God. Dude, he's damn. hilarious. He man. is so funny. You definitely don't get that in his videos. Like no. off camera, he's a he's a nice, genuine person. Yeah. So oh, that absolutely. personality is still there. What you're seeing on camera is not fake, but he is so freaking hilarious oh, off yeah. camera. Yeah. One of the funniest guys I've ever been around. I would say he's filtered. Yes. On he's, camera. On camera he's yeah. filtered. He's marketable. Yes. Is yes. what he is. Yeah. All right. So let's hear from Nutsack before we go. <laughs> Speaking of not being marketable, <laughs> <laughs> let's let's uh, let's hear from that sack, and then we'll go into the pig trail and some more about the craziness that we got into with the ornery one and the ornery squaw. Nutsack is the only EDC bag the crew carries, and for good reason. They're crazy and awesome. They get their name because folks said they had to be nuts to manufacture a man bag in America with American waxed canvas, American leather, and American labor. We want you to join us in the two-week challenge. Buy a bag from them, use it for two weeks, and if it doesn't completely change the way you carry your everyday gear, they will give you a full refund. We absolutely love ours from carrying a Around extra mags for our concealed carry to earbuds sunglasses vape stuff and business cards it is great having less shit in our pockets and it was because of the nutsack satchels that we were able to be less weighed down if you buy using our link nutsack will give you five dollars off to enjoy a beer head over to nutsack.com slash b2w that's n-u-t-s-a-c dot com slash be the number two w to get yours today all right and we are back and we're continuing our recap of the uh, arkansas trip so let's talk about well let's talk about whatever you guys want to talk about i have on here the pig trail but uh do y'all want to talk about that or do you want to continue on with the ornery one and his wife well let's just keep on with the days so yeah. day three is when we were actually we, we met up with the ornery one and, and the ornery squaw on day two yeah, which was Friday. just at the meet and greet we yeah. didn't actually have any riding with them day three was when we were meeting with uh the arkansas tourism board as well as the city of uh, harrison arkansas mm -hmm. that was what that was the business end of what we were there for yeah. Yeah. so we could go and experience the town experience the rides and kind of help talk about what we experienced yeah um i've got a lot of good things to say about them but first this was the first time that we saw the the giant 12 inch suction cup dildo that we were looking for a couple episodes back yep was first brought out oh yeah and it was stuck to brad's tour pack for about 80 miles oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah yeah so and, that and, was and no, and no idea he had no hilarious. idea no. i totally thought he saw it yeah because when you sat on the crotch yeah he stretched back he's like oh he had to have seen it yeah but no he was actually posing for hasso yeah <laughs> hasso's like hey when we get to this next stop i want to get a picture so he has his GoPro and he gets the picture. <laughs> Brad, he's like, I saw something out of the corner of my eye, but I was like, whatever, it's probably nothing. Yeah, that's something. Oh, yeah. oh it was something. You that was a you monster. Can't miss it. People were <laughs> laughing, taking pictures. Taking pictures. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, the guy in the electric 
the Lex- electric company. Yeah. He drove by, and I pulled up next to him at a stoplight, and he was not happy. Nope. He was telling him, he was telling Jesus about oh, what you were doing. He was uh, just, he gave me the biggest fucking stank mm. face. Yeah. yeah. But then there was a an SUV that was in front of him that as Brad passed. So Brad's driving down the road, <laughs> and he's got this big dildo flopping around in the back, sticking straight up into the air. Yeah. Well, he's, he's jamming to his music. <laughs> So as he really gets into it, that fucking thing is just <laughs> waving back and Flat, forth. Flopping. Oh, yeah. And it was, it was almost in unison with him dancing. It's oh, hilarious. Yeah. Or he'd stop at a stoplight, and it'd sit there, and it <laughs> would just quiver. <laughs> yeah, because of the vibration His of the bike. quivering yeah, would just, member. Yeah. Quivering member. I like that. But I saw this, <laughs> this one SUV. He passed it, and I saw the head turn to the right, and then immediately I saw the cell phone come up. <laughs> so they could get pictures or video. Oh, it was it's great. Had, no so, clue. No clue. So after the dildo ride, we ended up at the Brick Oven Pizza Company. Uh, they had pretty much just arranged a whole section for us and our group to to come out, and they, uh, the city of Harrison, copped the whole bill. They pretty much said, "Order whatever you want." Uh, and the guy started talking about what um, what the whole organization was about yeah. and what he expected from us. And the thing that I thought was just super awesome of this guy he's like i don't want to be listed as a sponsor i want you guys to come out and tell about your experience that's all i want and that right there shows that he is confident in the city of harrison and the rides and everything like that and i was like okay this guy's really like talking it up but it it, (sighs) worth it it, yeah it it did not disappoint oh yeah (laughs) so he copped our whole bill uh and then we met up with the arkansas tourism board which they sent out a photographer to get oh, which I was not expecting. Us. I didn't expect it to be yeah. of that extent. Yeah. No. <laughs> that was like a media day event. Style. I thought it was yeah. fucking awesome. I mean, I thought we were going to have a guide on a motorcycle and we were going to follow him on yep, the motorcycle. Yeah. And That's what I expected. But no, this guy comes out in a state of Arkansas vehicle. Yeah. Like yeah. a Dodge Durango. And he takes us up in the mountains and this guy, the photographer is hanging out the back of the Dodge oh, Durango. Yeah. Yeah. He's got the back lift gate open. And he's hanging, or then he gets in, inside and he's hanging out the oh, entire yeah. side window. Yeah. He's putting his body on the line for the shot. Yeah. And as a photographer, I was fucking so stoked for that. And I was, <laughs> it was funny because, like, the honor one was riding behind him and I could tell what type of lens he was using. I'm like, oh, he's not getting, he's not getting the best of shots. So when TJ waved me up, I got right on that car's ass and he's like, yeah, get closer, get closer. So I was like, I was sketchy close to that car. <laughs> like that lift gate was hovering right over the top. I was probably bike. breaking the plane of yeah. that lift gate at one point. <laughs> it was, nice. it was up there, but, um, a little, a little messy with that many people trying to get as much stuff, but yeah. I had no complaints because I like to stop. I like to sightsee. I like I to too. experience the town. Yeah. So. so, so when he was still hanging out of the back and you told me on comms to come up, mm-hmm. of course, faith, she was on the back, but she didn't have she comms. Had no idea. <laughs> so all of a sudden I drop a couple gears and bah! <laughs> she was not happy about that. Yeah, by in, the way. in a no passing zone. <laughs> yeah. Cause in, I was, I was his eyes and ears up front. So I could tell him if there's any cars. He's like, coming, all right, you're so. clear. You're clear. Go, go, go. So he's taking a, a turn in a, in a blind corner, just hauling ass past like 15 bikes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was fun though. Oh, it was, it was a great <laughs> I, time. I tell you though. Yeah. The guy, they bought us lunch and everything, but it's no joke some of the most beautiful yes. riding was, areas in the country. Yeah. Not only is it beautiful riding just as far as scenery, but the roads are so well maintained. Yeah. They are so fun and technical. Um, we didn't really hit any super duper technical. Maybe that little stretch down to the, the, the river that we stopped yeah, yeah, to the basin. Hour turns, yeah. That was about it. Um, but just got they're so well maintained there's not a piece of trash out there everyone even in the country like out in the trailer parks you yeah. saw well maintained lawns yes like people were living in like thousand square foot houses but had like a four thousand dollar lawnmower yeah, yeah. <laughs> i it saw a guy a- out there on a toro zero turn like yeah. those things are not cheap <laughs> but yeah so killed it out there yeah i, I had a blast and oh, I, yeah. I tell you, that dildo was passed around like a cheap whore. Bro, I mean, it touched four, every right? fucking bike. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot I of stuck hands. it on the honorary one's uh, headlight for a couple pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I put that one on my Instagram if you want to go see that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's just, it was a great day. Uh, we ended up um, breaking off, 
going back to the uh, Airbnb, showering, getting ready. And by the time 10 of us got ready to go, uh, we ended up going to dinner on our own, right? That was yes. Saturday? Yeah. yeah, that was when we went to the uh, Eureka Springs Harley dealership. Yeah. And then we went over to eat Thai food. Yeah, that's right. Which yeah. wasn't bad. No, it was pretty good. For Eureka Springs, Arkansas? Yeah. I mean, granted, it's it's not comparable I mean, hey, to, they, to they, what? That, the curry was pretty fucking dope. There's there's definitely worse Thai restaurants yes. in San Antonio oh, than yeah. that place. It was, I'd give it a solid seven and a half. Oh, I mean, yeah. Which is good. So we ate, and then, you know, TJ had been talking up this 80s drag oh, show. God. Yeah night at Eureka this Live. yeah the Eureka, Eureka Live, Eureka which Live. is like the local gay bar well there's a lot of local gay bars oh, okay. <laughs> oh yeah they said I think like 80% of the bars in downtown Eureka are gay bars no okay but uh, so we go your dad didn't have his ID correct because my mom threw your, it in the saddlebag your 90 year old dad <laughs> needed an ID so yeah they card him and would not let him in yeah. without that id I, so if you're ever in eureka springs arkansas arkansas or, or yeah it's arkansas. arkansas it's an arkansas state law it's a law make sure you have some form of id fake or real with you um showing that you're over 21 if you plan on going yeah. into a bar yep my dad is 62 years old has gray hair down below his shoulders and a gray all gray beard yeah. and they would not let chrome. him nope. chrome yeah, it's a, chrome it's chrome, chrome. <laughs> so we, we end up hanging out. We don't even go down to the drag show because uh, we're <laughs> it's a cash only place. Yeah. And who the fuck carries cash on them? <laughs> but uh, we're I hanging had out. cash, but I wasn't paying <laughs> almost $200 to get this all in. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it had a $10 cover charge. Yep. But uh, we ended up just hanging out on the patio area and it had a, a blast. blast. Oh, had a great time. Oh. And like, I, I didn't even drink. And I had a, I had a great time. I had one drink. Yeah, like we didn't even get drunk, but just the energy the energy off of TJ is yeah. just he is the life of the party. He is just constantly cracking jokes and just talking about fun things. And yeah, yeah it was we sat there for probably two or three hours before finally uh we talked our way into the drag show. <laughs> yeah. For free. Yeah. <laughs> for yeah. free. Yeah. So Steph had a hook up there. Yeah. And yeah. some extremely gay dude uh, finally came back up. He's wearing that weird wig thing. Yeah, yeah that was the owner. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And so he got us in for free. He let a, the crowd come in after the main crowd had already left. Yeah. So we ended up going down there, and for what it was, for Eureka Springs, it was actually a pretty interesting drag show. Oh, yeah. Interesting is a good word to put on it. Yeah. That was my first one I've ever seen, so I didn't really know what to drag show? No. Oh. Dude, they, that uh, was an was... amateur drag show. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I if believe If you go to yeah. some that are like more like professionally done, they're fucking great yeah. yeah where there's a uh, lot was, of money involved yeah i was very uncomfortable really oh yeah so just I, because I was like pissed that i didn't get a single drink bought for me oh uh, yeah so i mean i did buy everyone a drink but i didn't buy you one because you don't have a drink yeah no 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 i was talking about from a gay dude oh i was like i i I always get hit on at gay bars. Hold on. What about the the guy that was hitting on Brad? Oh. Holy shit! He oh wanted to take Brad home that night. We're not talking this up for daddy. the podcast. That was gonna be his sugar daddy. That was so. It's funny because we're we're standing by the bar, and this guy comes up, and I hear him go, "Oh, San Antonio, huh?" And Brad turns around and realizes he's talking to him. And he goes, "Yeah." And then they just start chatting. This guy's like giving him compliments or anything like that, and Brad's just totally oh. trying to to push him away. Oh, you, did, did you see the... Oh, yeah. He was, oh, he yeah. was touching his was, shoulder yeah. and, like, touching his arm. Oh, yeah. Give Bro, the all signs the signs were there. And then he walks away, and Brad goes... He, he kind of, like... He's kind of, like, staring off in the distance, and he slowly turns to me. He goes, how did he know I was from San Antonio? I was like, <laughs> you're wearing a fucking Alamo City Harley Davidson shirt, you dumb fuck. And he goes, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> he had you, man. Oh yeah, god, you. that was that was probably the highlight of the night, even <laughs> with everything that that went on. Yeah, <laughs> Just because yeah. we joked about it happening, but then it actually. Oh, then it actually happened. Yeah. <laughs> but your dad finally got a, a drink bought for him by a gay guy. Did he? he? I thought so. I don't, I don't know. know. He was he's out the there. He was out there getting whipped. Oh god. Yeah. That he happened. might have. Yeah, by that drag queen. Yeah. And I think someone bought with him a gigantic drink. Gigantic titties. Well, they were fake. And with the, from like, where I was standing, they were real and gigantic. <laughs> Like it was a suit. Yeah. But from this 350 pound. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, it, it, he she was large. What was what's those things called? A crop, a crop, a rider's crop. A rider's crop. Your yeah. dad took a bunch of spanking. Oh yeah, it was oh, loud. Yeah. Oh yeah, I heard yeah. him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about that that other guy that was that new uh, TJ? That was he was there for his birthday. Oh, he was all about that. The guy that was sitting oh, outside. Oh god, that guy was funny too. Oh my god, <laughs> that guy to me was stereotypical Arkansas. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, but, uh, but closeted because we were in a gay bar. <laughs> yeah. 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 He was cleaned up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he, he had his fancy jean shorts on. <laughs> They're the nice ones without yeah. any paint on them. <laughs> so yeah, it, but hanging out with TJ and stuff was just fun i felt so terrible though because when the night was over like we were all like all right let's go and then i looked at tj and tj's home i was like hey we're gonna go upstairs and he, he gave me a thumbs up so i turned around and left and then i think about half the group got upstairs and we were sitting there waiting for the rest of the group and everyone else came up i'm like where's tj and stuff like oh they're not coming up and i was like oh well shit like yeah. i didn't say bye or anything yeah we all just, we just kind of walked out like i thought when i when he gave me the thumbs up he's like yeah i'll meet you up there but that's not what he didn't meant happen. so yeah i sent him a text I'm like yo dude didn't mean to be a fucking dick <laughs> by the time <laughs> i was up there everyone was already split off to their cars and I, I was not driving so he's like don't worry about it so but uh good time. but yeah so we ended up leaving great night great night oh and so then, much fun on the, the <laughs> well we had a lot of fun at the hotel at the, the B&B. Your mom read you a story. Oh, God. Let's please not talk about that. That was so funny. My mom read me a story. That's the end of that. Yeah. Hilarious. Anyways, day four, <laughs> we were pretty much, we as in the, the group that rode up there, were pretty much done with riding. Yeah. You understandably were wanting to, to go. Yeah. Go more. Uh, so y'all said you were going to go do... Uh, most of the pig trail since we only touched a very small smidgen of it on the day before Uh, rode a lot of other great roads but we didn't actually hit the pig trail Um, so day four we decided to go down and kind of explore Eureka Springs downtown Mm -hmm. Uh, it was the Sunday before Memorial Day so it was very busy Uh, we got to check out all the local shops we rode the train which was very underwhelming yeah (laughs) it was like a two mile trip two and and a half there two and a half yeah two and a half back yeah the train went five miles on the way up ten miles on the way back or five miles an hour I mean yeah Um, super super duper underwhelming Um, the the car was kind of cool it was a hundred and something year old car so that was kind of dope then we went into downtown. I'd say that the shops were actually pretty fun. I wanted to go in more shops. I, I did too. It was funny because the guys were like, let's go in more shit. And the girls were like, we need to get home and get dinner ready. I'm like, it's fucking, they were rushing us, which is yeah. completely ass backwards from, from what it usually <laughs> was. Um, but I mean, the shops go on forever, oh, and forever. They were all so different. Yeah. It wasn't like your typical tourist trap bullshit. Yeah. I mean, there were, yeah, there were a bunch of candy shops and yeah, they, there were you know, the tourist traps, but they were but, all kind of different though. Yeah. yeah. We went into one that had like some weird art. We went into one that was, uh, had different flavored cotton candy, which was really weird. <laughs> It was just, it was a good time. And then finally we made it to the one that I've been waiting to go to for like three years, the the home of the working bunnies. Yes. <laughs> so my dad first told me this story. First time I went to Eureka Springs was about three years ago. It was right when I had just barely got into to riding. He told me that there was a store where they have working rabbits. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? He goes, they have a rabbit on the counter that they use to take the money back and forth. And I was like, bullshit. <laughs> We got to experience it, and it was one of the coolest fucking things. Hell yeah. So you walk in the door, there's a fuzzy rabbit on the ground just hanging out. I didn't see that one. It was the gray one with the fluffy ears. Anyways, that one was stupid fucking cute. But then there's also a big fat one sitting on the counter. Right right by the register. Right probably weighed like 10 pounds. Yeah, he he was a chunky little fuck. And what happens is if you're paying with card or cash... You hand the card to the bunny. The bunny will grab the card, turn it to the store owner, and give it to the store owner. The store owner will make change or whatever, put your stuff in a bag, and then he will hand you your change back, hand you your receipt back. Uh, he'll give you your autograph, which is him biting a chunk out of it, and then he'll grab the bag and hand it to you. It so this is all the bunny doing this. This it's is all, the, all bunny. the bunny doing this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Blew my fucking mind. It was so, great. So while you guys were out shopping, Trace and I rode Highway 23. Yep. And so we 
took 23 all the way through Eureka Springs, all the way down to I-40. <laughs> and God, it was fun. Yeah. And but so we're about 15, 20 miles from I-40. And we get behind what had to be brand new riders who should not have been on that road. Yeah. And the guy was going, you know, the girl on the road king was leading and she seemed more experienced than the guy was the guy when he was doing those 15 mile per hour u-turns his bike didn't really lean <laughs> i'm like he oh. was doing parking lot turns i'm like oh my god <laughs> i mean they were they were literally going five to ten miles under the speed ah, limit around safe. This. that is not safe and pull over and let people pass man god. so there's tracy and i and then there was about nine other bikes Jeez. that were all from some MC up in Dallas. And they were right on Tracy's ass. I'm like, oh, God, if they fuck this up, I'm going to kill some motherfuckers. <laughs> and I checked. I was like, okay, I got my pistol. I got extra rounds. Okay, I'm good. I can take them all. <laughs> you were actually preparing. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, they were in, in my rearview mirror. They were right up on Tracy. And then they'd back off and come right back up on her. And they could see these two noobs right in front of me. And, I mean, I'm stretched out, foot on the highway pegs, just cruising along. And then they, these two yahoos finally get off the road, and I light it up. <laughs> and Tracy and I, I mean, she's sticking three bikes behind me. And That's just, impressive. And maintaining yeah. <laughs> right? And we're going through these things. It said 50, 80 it was. Yeah. And we were just flying. And these other bikes all keeping up with us. Nice. And we are flying down this road. And we get to I-40. There's a gas station. Then we pull off on the gas station. And, again, these these folks were two guys in particular right up on Tracy. And we pull off to get gas. They pull up like, oh, my God, that was so much fun after those fucking idiots get out of the way. <laughs> and the lady who's riding on the back of her, I'm guessing her husband's bike, she was like, I was making fun of these guys. They were all clenched up riding. You're just laid out and just cruising <laughs> along. And like, oh, man, that's so much fun. Where are you all from? And I hand them our, you know, the spam cards for bet- uh, Between Two Wheels. And I was like, yeah, we're from San Antonio. And they're like, oh, man. This is so much better than the whole country. It's like, oh god, yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just the road conditions alone. The road, the road conditions. Yeah, I mean, the alone. roads are so, so much nicer. Are. And then we had two options. We're like, okay, we have to get back for dinner. We can go forty to forty nine. We can ride the tunnel, <laughs> or we can go back up Highway twenty three. She's like, oh no no no, we're going up twenty three. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And we flew back yeah. up there. I mean, we we made it back. I want to say 45 minutes faster Jesus, than what we had gone down. And it was just her and I just, you know, we know each other's riding style. Yeah. And, but yeah, she kept, she kept a three bike gap that entire time. And I, I, I brag about her being one of the most technical riders I know. And she was like, look, if I can follow someone directly, and see what line they're taking, I'm golden. Yeah. And she followed my line exactly. And, and she's a phenomenal rider unless there's gravel involved. <laughs> Any kind of gravel. But, uh, but yeah, we just had a blast. I mean, she had this big shit-eating grin on her face the entire <laughs> way. And it, it was just, it was fun. And then you guys end up riding it the next day. Correct. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. We Thanks just, to you because I would have never even thought, thought that it, it connected yeah. I, I had no idea where it was but when you said it was literally like only five miles longer to go that way i was like oh well, fucking well, obviously we're gonna go do yeah. it yeah we're not gonna come all the way to Eureka springs and not ride it so, yeah um i thought it was i thought it was fun i didn't think the road conditions were as nice as some of the other roads right. yeah um but there's something to understand about that road too there's a lot of traffic from big trucks yeah because there's a lot of logging and stuff, logging right? stuff yeah. going on. Plus, there's so much trees and everything covering it up. The The road stays damper longer. Yeah, oh, I'm sure it's a bitch to fucking maintain. Yeah. But 
I think still well maintained. It was though. it was still way better than yeah. than for example the Twisted Sisters are. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, but yeah. I after being spoiled for four days, it that felt like riding on a fucking chopping block. Like <laughs> Yeah. But uh it wasn't as technical as I expected. I think it's because it's been hyped up for so long. Yeah. Um, Alicia asked me which was more technical, that one or the um, Terlingua Road, the one to Presidio. Oh, the Ranch Road? Yeah. I hmm. said the Ranch Road, hands down. I had a lot more pucker moments on the Ranch Road than I did about on 107? the Trail. I think so. 114. The, the we one bet- to the Mexican restaurant? Yeah. Yeah, yeah 107. There was a lot of come over the the hill and oh fuck you yep. gotta fucking lean over. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The pig trail was a lot better, had a lot better signage. Yeah. Um, and the signs were true. Yeah. Uh, like you said, the fifties you could take it eighty, the forties I was taking about seventy, thirties were about fifty, and the twenties were around thirty thirty five. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, and then of course the ten fifteens were about ten fifteen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh yeah, ninety degrees. But um, thankfully, we we stayed clear of traffic up until about the last probably about ten miles. We got okay. stuck behind an SUV, which was it was funny. I don't know if you smelled it, but that it was a Mercedes SUV, and I saw the the GDI on the back. I was like, oh, it's it's a diesel, because I started smelling. It smelled like we were behind like a, a pickup truck, yeah, like a diesel truck. I was like, it's, it's, it was just it was fuck with my head to be riding behind a nice Mercedes, but smelling yeah. burnt diesel. But. <laughs> All right, so let's let's take a break. We'll hear from Brush Hero, and then let's talk about the ride back and my closing argument. If you prefer washing your own bike and car, Brush Hero is the ultimate DIY detailing tool for you. 100% water powered, all you have to do is hook it up to your garden hose and go to town on your dirty ride. With the various interchangeable brush heads, you will be able to take care of those hard to reach spots around the engine, your rims, and anywhere else road gribe can get stuck to. So if you are a DIY detailer, pick up a Brush Hero today. And if you use the coupon code WHEELS, you will get 10% off your order. And we're back now. I just have to say real quick, I'm so glad I had a Brush Hero because because of the ride back, I definitely had to use it because yeah. my bike was fucking filthy. <laughs> you use it on the whole thing? Uh, not really. Uh, I use it. I, I keep it off the paint just because I have the wrap. Um, I use it on the entire wheel, uh, the forks, motor, frame, anything that's like kind of in that tight spot. Mm-hmm. I'll I'll get it in there. The rocker boxes, shit like that. It just does an amazing job. I just, so, need, I just need to let let my kids know where. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, you can use it on the paint. The soft brush is soft enough to where it's not going to fuck anything up. Yeah. But on the paint, it should be fine. But the vinyl, I wouldn't want to risk yeah. it. Yeah. No. Yeah. But yeah, I plan on using it, hopefully this weekend, on the entire bike. Yeah, swing arm, getting in between the belt and the pulley and everything. Oh, God, it works amazing. So let's talk about the ride back. It felt, Tracy brought this up, and I think it may just been because we had a lot more traffic to contend with on the way up than we did on the way back. And the stops seemed shorter on the way back than it did on the way up. But uh yeah, let's let's talk about it because I think it it was a lot less time getting back than it and it felt. It felt shorter, but it was actually exactly the same. Yeah, really. Okay. I mean, I think it was only off by like thirty minutes or so. Hmm. But I do agree the stops did feel shorter. Yeah, we definitely it, didn't hang around as long. No, we were all kind of ready to just get back on the bikes and get home. Yeah. <laughs> so leading up to us leaving. I was trying to load the trailer. So I had taken the trailer off of the truck and actually used, they have steel cables instead of chains where you connect it up to the, uh, the hitch. Mm -hmm. So I used that to wrap around the pole and then use the padlock to lock it there. So when I was putting it back on, I was good to go, but you guys are putting all of the dick stickers on Brad's bike. So I was paying more attention to that than what I was actually doing. I think you got your timelines you got fucked your timeline up. Timeline wrong, buddy. Your bikes were already on the trailer and loaded by the time we put those stickers on. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, you guys were putting them on when I was loading up the when no, I was sir. connecting the trailer. I've got no, video sir. proof to show otherwise. <laughs> 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 your bikes were loaded when we put those dick stickers on. Yeah, yeah. The first dick sticker went on your door. Mm. Yeah, while you were loading the trailer. The trailer. Oh okay. 
I was I was not paying attention. <laughs> there was so. a lot going on. People yeah. were loading up bikes. They were loading up cars. There was shit going in my dad's trailer. It was. Yeah. I was trying ready. to record yep. you because I want to do a time lapse of how easy it was to record. Yeah, and I fucked all that up. Yeah, you fucked it all up. <laughs> um, so I got everything connected. Got the it, the uh, the trailer on the ball. But I forgot to fucking lock it down. <laughs> and, and if you're familiar with the, the famous term, give me a place to stand and I can move the world. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> so I go to roll my bike up and I get it right on the up the ramp onto the trailer and boom, the uh, the teeter totter <laughs> was yeah. heavier on my side. You got to learn the lesson of a simple machine called the lever. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, luckily, Ken was there to grab it, and I could back the the bike off. And he put it back on. He actually locked it down. And Mark said, "You forgot to lock it, <laughs> <laughs> little bastard." Uh, obviously, I forgot to lock it. But uh, I tell you, it's easy to load bikes on that trailer. Um, as long as you get it straight up and down when you get it on into the wheel chalk, it's not going to move. You can get off the bike and then tie it down. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was just stupid easy. And, again, the mounting points and everything were perfect. It is a great fucking trailer. So I'm going to see if we can get them to sponsor us so we can get uh, a free trailer or two out of it. I don't know. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, if I can get a vehicle to pull one, I'd be all. I mean, I got a, I got a vehicle to pull one. <laughs> oh, actually, we did confirm that Alicia's car can pull it. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Even with two bikes. There you go. So the trailer is five hundred pounds. Or it's like four ninety, and then two full baggers puts it at what? It's eighteen hundred to so twenty three hundred pounds. Yeah. Her car can I think tow thirty nine hundred. Yeah. So you're fine. Yeah, she's way in the clear. But uh, but I just don't have a place to store it, so. It is. Well, yeah. I got too much shit in my garage as it put, is. Put it in your backyard. Uh, if if I had a concrete pathway to get it back there. Yeah, you can get it. No. Those those caster wheels are not going to work on gravel. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. If you want to store it here, you can. Yeah. I might do that. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah. So, we trailered back. And I, this is why I'm saying it paid for itself. I was not sore at all. I mean, other than sitting in a damn truck seat yeah. for 12 hours. Yeah, and about a day's work is about $1,400 for you, right? Yeah. So you didn't take the extra day off, so it paid for itself. Yeah. Well, I'm working from home right now anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it was it was nice. And again, people can talk shit all they want. I'm so glad we trailered. And the next trips that we do... I'll be towing. No, it'll be the next trip will be good. We got the Cardos. They're working like a motherfucker. Working awesome. Yeah. But uh so we made it back. Very uneventful ride back. Yep. Um I think the biggest we, event was your heat shield came loose. Oh yeah, the heat shield on my bike <laughs> fucking rattling. What about you, the what about the whistle? Oh yeah, the exhaust whistle. <laughs> So Ken bought an exhaust whistle in one of the, uh, the downtown magic shop. shop. Yeah, the magic, magic shop. shop downtown. And uh, put it in Alicia's car. And that was pretty fucking hilarious. So <laughs> Faith told me, so when they backed out and they stopped at the bottom of the hill and got mm-hmm. out, they didn't stop because of the whistle. No. They thought that we had put dicks on the car. Yeah, so she stopped to walk around the car and made sure that the suction like, cup dildo is, was not stuck on the car. Why is he recording? They're all standing there laughing and recording. There's something on the car. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I heard it. I was like, what the fuck is that noise? <laughs> it literally sounded like a car at the Jetsons. Yes. That's exactly what it sounded like. And they said like every time that they would, you know, the car would drop a gear to go up a hill, it turned into a straight whistle. Just a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they could hear it over the music and everything. <laughs> oh, yeah, she was very happy. They were not happy? <laughs> no. Because I remember she got out of the car and said, it's that fucking whistle <laughs> it's the fucking whistle <laughs> <laughs> and then we all busted out laughing yeah and it was good hilarious time. yeah was and good. then your heat shield came undone it made it sound like your fucking motor was about to grenade itself yeah because <laughs> it only happened at certain rpms it literally sounded like a piston yeah oh god i was like he's gonna his bike's fucked 
And then yeah. I got on the ground and started listening around and I got my, I actually used my vapes. I didn't have any tools on me. And I just started pressing things. And I, first thing I pressed was the heat shield and it, and it stopped. I'm like, heat shield's loose. Yep. <laughs> and then did you ever get your kickstand? I just haven't fucked my yeah. bike. Yeah. He got some, he got some gunk in his kickstand. So it doesn't. I bottomed out when we uh, stopped that first spot, take pictures against that okay. mountain wall. Yeah. I bottomed out in a, in a rut. Yeah. So it filled up my, kickstand spring with dirt and rocks <laughs> so now that's why it was flopping so i i, couldn't I compress noticed all the it way. it's flaccid yeah. yeah i noticed it when we were driving it's like what is that he's a flaccid jiffy stand is yeah. that his kickstand what the fuck's going on <laughs> and then at the next stop you guys had said yeah his kickstand's fucked i was like damn but well, uh gotta get a new bike <laughs> 5k service time for a new bike i put, Shit, at least I put 25 20 <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, uneventful. We, everyone got back. Um, just, it no, was a f- no bikes broke down. Yeah. No. I mean, literally the biggest thing we had was Brad's screws coming out. Yeah. Yeah. And that was it. That was the only time I had to break out the toolkit. Well, that and to nail the nails back in, in your carpet in your room. Oh yeah. <laughs> he had a nail sticking out of his, out of Ooh. his floor. <laughs> yeah. That'd be no, no good. All right. So let's, let's move into, the closing argument. Now, you guys haven't seen this one, have you? No, nope. I have, and I already know your answer because of your tabs open on your. <laughs> <laughs> if money wasn't an option and you could only choose one, where would you buy a vacation home? Big Bend, anywhere in the area, so it can be Aspen or what's the Alpine, all the way down to Big Bend, um, or the Ozarks. Oh, I definitely buy in the Ozarks. Okay. Definitely Big Ben. Wow. Okay. So I I do have the Realtor.com site up. Um, I was looking at pricing, so I want to see what's what's the difference in cost. Oh, that's me. This, I'm actually very interested in this. Ten acres on a decent road in Eureka Springs. You can get it for sixty thousand. Okay. The biggest plot in the Big Bend area. Now, that's like a 400-mile radius because Big Bend is massive. That area is huge. huge. For $60,000, you can get 190 (laughs) acres, both of which have no build restrictions, both of which are on major thoroughfares. Well, I say on. That's a big chunk of land. Yeah. So depending on where you put your property. Or put your vacation home, but uh, I'm I'm gonna have to go with Ken on this one. Okay, simply because in the Ozarks you're close enough to creature comforts that it helps. I mean, talk all the shit you want about Walmart, but when you're in the Ozarks, you're right <laughs> next to Walmart's home. Yeah, so there's like a hundred of them. Well, hunting would be better in Arkansas. Do you like hunting mule deer? Yeah, I like on 10 fuck, acres. Dude, I like killing fucking animals. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, All you, the animals. You fucking can't, pig hunting. You can't kill mule deer in, in Ozarks like you can in South Texas. I can still kill fucking deer. Yeah, well. And if I got a fucking whole bunch of land. So true, is that is you that your money's... main reason is the creature comfort? Well, that and the riding for me, I like the riding in the Ozarks because really interlingual, you only have two roads. Yeah. yeah. You have the one ranch road that goes out to Presidio, and then you have Big Bend National Park. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's some other nice areas out there. Not really, no. I, I could never get my wife to move to Big Bend. Well, oh, that was a vacation be... home. This is a vacation home. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, she, I don't know. But so, I'd also like the fact that you could go ride in three seasons in Big Bend, where you could get two and a half seasons in in the Ozarks because they do get snow nice, and they yeah. do get fuck you cold weather out there where it's not feasible to go and have an enjoyable ride. Yeah. But I think the winter time in the Ozarks is also prettier. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You know, with all the pine trees and everything else is out there. Yeah, Big Bend is just is just fuck you cold and, and everything's dead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's about all you get. And in the <laughs> in the spring, summer and fall, it's fuck you hot. Yeah, yeah, it can be, yeah. <laughs> there falls about a month. The reason I chose Big Ben is because, well, A, it's it's basically home for me. That's mm-hmm. where I, I grew up in that area. 
B, like you said, you can get a whole lot more land. And I'm not looking at it as a riding destination vacation. That's more of a vacation to get away. Yeah, you can go out there and ride if you want to, but that's more of a get the fuck away from everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, you can, I mean, shoot whatever you want. Pretty much do whatever. I mean, like you said, what, 100 and something acres? 190. 190. Buy some fucking four-wheelers, dirt bikes. I mean... You've got your own ranch at that point for oh, yeah. with 190 acres. Yeah. That's a shit ton of land. It is. But it you're you're it's pros and cons. Yeah. You're giving yeah. up stuff, you're you're getting stuff. I get it. But I, I think it's just because I've been so used or I have lived with no creature comforts for ten years of my life that yeah. I know how to prepare. See, for and that. I I could do that. I couldn't get my wife on board with that. Oh yeah. I could definitely get my wife on board. I just like with Eureka Springs or the Ozarks in general, I like the fact that you can be away from everyone, but within 10 to 15 minutes, you can be back in civilization. Yeah. Out there, you can't. No, unless you are. So. Yeah. Unless oh, yeah. you are in Alpine or <laughs> Terlingua. Yeah. <laughs> and that's even. I'm just saying, if I had a house like, like Tarantula Ranch, where the guy had the house up on the hill, even with all the windows, I would never have clothes on. That whole I mean, time I was out there, I'd be butt fucking naked. I mean, he was pretty close with those fucking shorts. He was, and I think that was, I think that was a lot for him. Probably. I, I think most of the time when that cabin, I think, quote unquote cabin, is not being rented out, he's naked too. Yeah, with just his boots and high socks on. And that fucking leather holster with uh, yes. his, his six shooter. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I can respect that man, just walking around slinging a gun between your legs and a gun on your hip, yep. just like God intended. You know, with your donkeys everywhere. Wait, are we talking? Oh, okay. All right. Dong keys. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I called my bike when you stuck it on. I was like, hey, look, it's the battle dong key. Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels Podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace. I, I, I be